Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to Model Kit Monday. Today, we'll be taking a look at the real grade RX Zero Unicorn Gundam. This is the 25th real grade release and is the milestone in the Gunpla Evolution project, releasing around the same time as the opening of the full size, fully transformable RX Zero Unicorn Gundam statue at the Gundam base in Tokyo. So, it's all very, very exciting news for fans of. Gundam Unicorn. I am a fan of Gundam Unicorn, and when I saw that the real grade Unicorn Gundam was happening, and it was able to transform, and it's a 144th scale, I got super stoked. And, luckily, the hype train did not let down. Now, I built this kit a little while ago, so I don't have a unboxing and runner overview to show you, but I do have a couple pictures here that will show of the uh, overall runners in total. It was a lot. This kit took a long time to build, um, mostly because it was just parts on top of parts on top of parts for the transformation. And the inner frame I thought was really cool because the inner frame actually, um, let's see if there's a picture here. Yeah, the inner frame actually has the uh, pink psycho frame bits on it as well, which I thought was cool. Uh, I won't be stripping off the armor to show you the inner frame in the video, so that's, that's your look at the inner frame for this here. But yeah, without further ado, let's take a look at what is possibly my favorite Gunpla of 2017. Alright, so here is the Unicorn Gundam in its Unicorn mode. Now, for those that don't know, in the past 1 to 144 scale releases of the Unicorn Gundam, namely the high grade releases, this kit was released in two different versions, the Unicorn mode and the Destroy mode. Never one kit together. So this is a major step forward for the 1 to 144th scale something only the real grade line could provide. Taking a closer look here, it's not like anything was lost because this can transform. All the details of the unicorn mode are in place, and the beautiful white plastic has multiple different shades to break it up. Uh, the only thing you can see here is like there's some psycho frame leaking out in the shoulders there, but overall it's a very, very clean look. This is a very solid unicorn mode figure on its own. In fact, the first production run of the uh, real grade Unicorn Gundam, there was the option to buy a version with the box that was in Unicorn mode instead of Destroy mode. But anyways, you can see here, looks very, very, very nice. I love the look of this kit. Especially since panel lining isn't really uh, something that's necessary here. There's a few lines that probably could be accented, but most part, it is all done with parts. And I love that. I love that part of real grades. Uh, now, I'm going to show this feature off here instead of uh, later in the video. That is the cockpit does open. Uh, it's kind of tricky to get it to do so uh, be based on the way it's designed. But if you get it just right, you can pop it open there. And you can see there's the cockpit. Um, I think probably the most detailed cockpit I've seen is the one from the real grade Sinanju. Which, by the way, I will not be reviewing under any circumstance. That thing is a nightmare. Um... This is still pretty good. I, I do like that. Um, I love the opening cockpits on the real grades. And might as well show this off here since we're talking about cockpits and scaling as the shoulders start to move. Uh, the kit does come with a tiny Benazir Lynx. Uh, it is so hard to focus on that, but there is there is a little Benazir. Really cool, really nice detail. If you wanted to paint it, best of luck to you. Alright, so what can this mode do on its own without transforming? Well... We got some articulation. So let's take a look at some articulation here, why don't we? Um, having trouble focusing because it's all white. And cameras just don't like white. Alright, so we've got a ball joint neck here, uh, which works pretty good. Uh, the only problem is you move it too much and it will start to transform. Uh, the shoulders here are, actually what's cool is the frame actually has them locked in, in here. So they actually do swing forward, but they won't come off, which is great. Um, really nice and tight joints. This is a new inner frame, naturally for the real grade line, that's really appreciated after what happened with the Sinanju using the same frame as everybody else, but you can see you get a nice range, you can get a, like a nice like forward torso bend. Um, the hips as well, um, all the skirt pieces move out of the way, uh, we got a swivel, we got a double jointed knee, which you can see it doesn't cause a transformation, that's what I love about this, everything's locked down. It's not like you're going to start transforming this thing just by articulating it. So that's really cool. Uh, naturally, as per the design, uh, you do have the beam sabers in the arms like this. Um, I just totally ripped that out, but uh, you do have that option. 
um, to pull them out of there. Uh, there also is the two in the back, um, which is cool. But you can see, basically, the unicorn on its own looks pretty sweet. Now, in unicorn mode, not the most common mode to use, but if you are going to use this as a unicorn mode, 1 to 144 scale figure, great, great kit. Uh, you also do get shield. As you can see here, the shield looks really nice, nice white plastic. Um, once again, you can kind of see some psycho frame in the bottom. Uh, this just clips right onto the arm, locks it in place, super nice, um, which I, I appreciate. And then he fell over on me. Note to self, never try to put Gunpla on a spinning base while it's spinning. Uh, we also do get, let's see, we got the beam rifle, standard little beam rifle. Uh, neat little details, since it is real grade, uh, you get the little handle here, standard, but you can also pull this out and pull the ammo clip out. Uh, this ammo clip does clip to the back of his waist if you really feel like it, but I think this gun looks incredibly weird without the ammo clip. Um, but, you know, to each their own, I'm not going to judge. I do like those little details that Real Grade throws in like that. Um, also, you get the bazooka here. Uh, more so for destroy mode, but we're just going to show it off here. Um, handle. Uh, also, this has an ammo clip, uh, which you can pull this part out here, uh, which does, this is probably like the flimsiest part on the whole thing. It's that, but then you can just kind of load this up here, um, like that. So you got that option. Uh, once again, this does clip to the back of the waist. I find it more useful here, for whatever reason. Uh, naturally, because Unicorn, you get two beam sabers, not four, because you can't hold four, so you only get two, uh, which is nice. Um, but also means, yeah, you can't have these two activated from the backpack ones, and also the forearm ones, uh, but that's okay by me. Uh, Hands-wise, you get two hands here, which are the open hands, which is nice, two fists there, and the two hands that are multi-purpose holding hands, uh, which I do like that they're all one hand. You also do get a clip for a Gundam action base, which has a peg for some and a hole for others, and clips down into his waist area. And lastly, you get two cool little accessories. So while the normal horn on the Unicorn Gundam is a transformable horn, you also get a solid open and a solid closed. If, you, if you're if you dead set on, yeah, I'm going to keep mine in Unicorn mode, you got that. If you're in dead set destroy mode, there you go. Uh, personally for me, it's really kind of hard to swap them, so uh, I just kind of leave them. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for that. Let's get this guy a little bit more armed up and in a cooler pose than just slightly leaning forward. So overall, the Unicorn mode for the Unicorn Gundam is fantastic. It looks great. It's solid on design point. It just looks fantastic. And if this was a separate kit in the real grade line, it'd still be amazing. But the fact that this transforms into the destroy mode is probably the highlight of this kit, I think, for a lot of people. But on top of that, we got to not just be distracted by the fact that it transforms, but also realize that this kit is really impressive just as a Unicorn Gundam Unicorn mode kit. It's just awesome. So now let's take a look at the transformation. Uh, for consistency and sake of saving time, I'm going to only show half the transformation. So what I mean is I'm going to show how to transform one leg, and I'm not going to show the other. One arm, one of these little side flap things, one shoulder pad, etc. I'm just going to do one of each instead of doing two because that will just take a lot of extra time. So let's take a look at the transformation for the destroy mode. NTD system, activate. All right, so let's get this Unicorn Gundam transformed. We'll start with the easy parts of the shield, uh, because it's the shield. It's not very complicated, but it is pretty neat. Uh, this part slides down like that. This part slides open, slides open, and we're done. So we'll just uh, set that off to the side. Uh, next up, we will go ahead and take the backpack off. Um, this is just a requirement to make it... Well, it's not a requirement. You can leave it on, but it makes it a lot easier just to take it off. Uh, to transform it, and then to transform the parts below it. So we'll just uh, flip these out and around like this, uh, which works pretty good. And then we'll open these up here. So there's the backpack, pretty much all there is to it. So we'll put that off to the side. Um, we're also going to go ahead and remove the head now, mostly so we don't accidentally break the unicorn horn, but also so that we get... Uh, into the meat and potatoes of this transformation. So we're gonna start, um, let's start at the bottom, because this is the way it does in the show. Uh, so my only one, one complaint with this transformation is the uh, side panels here. You'd have to pull these off um, of each side of the foot. 
But then you want to take and fold this down, bring this down a bit, and fold this up. At this point, you want to undo these little latches here, one on this side, one on that side, pull the leg down, clip it back into place. Really works good. All right, so next you're going to pull this back, pull this down, and as we push this down, that piece is going to pop up. Love that so much. When I was building this, I was really curious to see what actually it was going to do. It's beautiful. And then we're going to pull the side panel of the leg here out a little bit. If we can get in there. It's kind of tricky with no fingernail at the moment. So pull that there, pull this down, close that back up. So now I got the leg. Uh, same with this side, or uh, same with the other side, but we're just going to keep going. Um, this panel has to pull up and out. Okay, so you take that piece, you pull it up, and then you push it out like that. This piece, you just pull it straight down, uh, which can be kind of tricky. This is actually one of the, the tightest pieces there. So you got that, and you want to pull a little thruster out in the back. Coming up to the arm, undo this hinge, and I think that you just pull, yeah, I think you just pull, oh yeah, you pull this up out like that and then pull that down and clip that back in uh, nothing to do there and then here pull this open rotate this around so that this part is out but not letting it unpeg and then fold this up like that so we got that all right <laughs> now we're gonna get here so we need to pull the shoulders out just gonna kind of wiggle them that's why the, the frame runs inside for the arm connectors and there's little uh little things there so we'll just pull those oh and don't pull too far because then that happens um and the panel comes off there's that pull those down like this and then come around here unhook this tab with a little hinge there pull straight up on the torso which stretches it out push that tab back in now we have to go and do the other side so this is basically if anyone's wondering what a half-transformed unicorn looks like, there you go. Um, there's, it gets really tall, which I think is really cool. So let's uh, pull this aside. And here we got the rest of the transformation done. Uh, looks really good. So let's get the backpack reattached here, um, which it's actually an interesting mechanism. You just kind of slot it in and slide it down, uh, which actually surprisingly works as about as well as you'd think. Um, and then the... Shield will clip back onto the arm since that's part of the transformation too. And then we'll top it all off with the head, which the head here is pretty interesting because it does require a little bit of parts forming. Uh, since in the show these parts flip around, we're going to need to just remove them entirely. Uh, the face just turns around. So you can see got the destroy mode head. And then we'll bring these back and then just flip them in the opposite direction. And now we will open up that classic unicorn horn. So now we got that head. And now place it on the top of the unicorn Gundam's body. And now we have the real grade unicorn Gundam in its destroy mode, which is probably the premier mode, probably the mode most people will leave it in. And begs the question, well, if you're not planning to transform it a whole lot, why get a transformable one? Well, first of all, I like options. Second of all, this just looks really good. Uh, a lot of the Unicorn Gundam kits have trouble because of the inner psycho frame being part of the design. So a lot of the high grades don't look as good because you don't just have that inner frame actually there. Uh, this, on the other hand, because the inner frame is actually there, it looks absolutely beautiful. And like I said with the, the unicorn mode, it's just armor on top of armor on top of armor. Parts on top of parts on top of parts. So you get that layered panel look without having to do any panel lining, any additional painting, and any stickers. The only stickers that I actually applied here were the stickers for the small silver bits on the sides of the uh, arms and legs. And the green, there's little green um, lights on the front and back of the unicorn head the eyepiece, and then the gold foil stickers for the open unicorn horns. Now, you're probably wondering, oh, it's a real grade. It probably has like 100,000 stickers for uh, the actual, like, little bitty, real, quote-unquote, realistic details. 
And it does. About 92 of them, to be exact. Except, oh yeah, uh, numbers 67, or 57 through 72 are multiples of the same sticker. Uh, I'm never doing this. I don't need the realistic decals this badly. There is so many. And what's cool is that all of these are on the actual statue that got made. So whoever had put the decals on that statue, good work. But yeah, basically, here is the unicorn destroy mode. Now you're probably wondering, oh, it transforms, it probably lost all its articulation. Nope. In fact, this kit is so well designed that, you know, full range of the neck, still there. Uh, torso, in fact, the torso bends even farther forward now. Cockpit still opens in this mode, by the way, um, even though it really doesn't need to. Um, anyway, shoulders here, like this. Uh, the elbows, double jointed. Knees, double jointed. Whole full range here. Nothing is lost. Even the ankles with its like complete weirdness down here. Nothing has been lost in the articulation department, which is fantastic. Because usually when something transforms, any any action figure that transforms usually loses something due to transformation. Uh, and it's usually it's usually the articulation department or the looks department. And neither are the case here. So overall. The transformation does not hinder this kit, it only adds to it, and I think it just adds this level of beauty and uh, ability here. Plus, it's really nice because you don't have to buy two kits, you just gotta buy the one. Um, we'll give him his beam rifle here since we didn't do that in unicorn mode. I feel like the beam rifle is super iconic. So we got that. And, uh, oh yeah, let's do the thing with the, the beam sabers, because they actually fl flip forward all the way now, thanks to the transformation. Oh look, we got a beam saber! On the wrist, uh, something that I don't find to be as cool as some people do, uh, mostly because the Sinanju can do this as well, and several other kits that I can't think of at the moment. Anyways, beam savers on the wrist, that's cool. Um, I really like that. Uh, of course, you can also just pull the beam savers out of the back. I do like, I, I do want to mention this, I do like how all the weapons, no matter what they are, they have pegs in the hands, so they don't actually, are, aren't a loose fit at all in the uh, holding hands for the unicorn. Um, anyways, uh, I'm not going to like display him with this, this shoulder rocket launcher thing. I mean, kind of get the idea that it kind of goes over the shoulder like that. So you got that. I don't really like it that much, um, and I don't like the... But I'll, I'll, you know, I'll stick the ammo clip on here, because that just looks cool. Um, so we got the ammo clip back there, which just adds to the, the unicorn's coolness. Um, overall, like the unicorn Gundam is probably one of my favorite Gundam designs, just in general. And... With Unicorn being one of my favorite Gundam series, which I know that's not like a unique statement or anything, just fight me in the comments. Um, I just, I love the way this kit looks. I love it. I just, I can't, it's hard to express into words what exactly it is that makes this kit work for me. Part of it is because it transforms. Part of it is because it's really articulated. Part of it's because it looks absolutely fantastic and doesn't lose anything. Because the Real Great Sinanju is a kit that I really liked, but the Real Great Sinanju was a kit that I really liked the look of, but wasn't functional because it used the same uh, frame as, say, the Exia or the Gundam Herc 2. It just couldn't handle how much armor was on top of it. This does not have that problem. It's a brand new frame built from the ground up, and I just love it. And Bandai, bring on as many repaints as you want. I will probably be buying this mold again. And looking at the Banshee Norn coming out in February 2018, I can definitely say for sure I'll be buying this mold again. Um, this is a great, great real grade, and I hope that they continue making more versions. Do the full armor. Do the regular Banshee if you want. I'll probably be in for it. Uh, do a green Psycho Frame version. I'm sure at some point I'll get tired of building it, but for now I don't see that happening anytime soon. So, much like the, the, the Gundam Barbatos being a kit I really enjoyed and I bought every variation of it that I wanted, I'm going to do the same with this Unicorn Gundam. Uh, I, I really do like it. So, overall, I highly recommend the Real Grade Unicorn Gundam. Even if you're not a fan of Unicorn, if you like the design enough, this is definitely a cool kit. And if you're not even a Gundam fan and you're just watching this video on a whim, this is definitely work of the pickup because it's a really cool robot model kit with a fully functioning transformation that doesn't lose anything. There's a couple parts from bits here, like you do have to flip the panels on the head manually and the feet panels as well. But overall, it's just, it's fantastic. Uh, this kit retails for about uh, about $40 uh, on the American market. 
Um, I got mine from Amazon.com. Um, you can get yours from Japan as well. I think it ran for about 3,000 yen. It did have a period of time where it was incredibly hard to find because it kept selling out everywhere due to its intense popularity. I'm sure which was helped by the fact that the statue opened around the same time as this kit releasing. Um, but definitely keep an eye out for it. It is definitely worth it. And if for some reason you don't like white, Banshee Norn's out in February 2018. So if you like the Banshee, you can get the Banshee version too. Um, overall, I just recommend this kit to pretty much anybody that likes building model kits, anybody that likes robots, and anybody that likes Gundam. It's one of those great kits that I can't recommend enough. So I have no idea what I'm going to do for the next model kit Monday. As you can see in the background, I have plenty of Gunpla I could review. I'm not really sure which one of those I will do. Uh, we'll have to see. But till next time, uh, be sure to check out Hero Club for all your Gundam news and more. And till next time, this is Sad Out saying goodbye. And just as I wrap the video, I realized I totally missed a step in the transformation. Um, but don't blame me. Blame the kit for having a lot of parts to it. Uh, that That is that part there. It, it doesn't do a whole lot, and that's why I didn't notice it. But excuse, excuse that. Um, I got a little too excited about the rest of it.